Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Story Darlings podcast. I'm Sandra. And I'm Tara. Happy New Year, officially. I think we said that the last episode, but like technically (laughs) we're in the new year. (laughs) Yeah. How's it going? I haven't talked to you in a while. I know. It's exciting to have our little weekly meetings again. I know. All of the editing and show notes, it's it's back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The meetings are the fun part. Everything that happens after is not so much fun. Yeah, surely there's like a different way of doing this. Yeah. But anywho, so since it's been so long, what have you been up to? What's new? Not a whole lot. Um, Just the holidays and getting back into work. It's it's miserable going back to work after an extended break. Um, Yeah, I feel you. I started working out and I know I've told you about this. I loathe working out, but I also need to get a little healthier, gain some muscle, things like that. So I have started working out. I am getting a little bit better at it. I don't feel like an idiot trying to lift a 10 pound dumbbell and struggling. Um, Michael lifted my dumbbell the other day and he's like, this isn't that heavy. I'm like, sit down. Just sit down and <laughs> shut up. I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. But yeah. What about you? I, I'm not working out. I'll tell you that. I'm proud <laughs> of you. I know you've been talking about working out. Like I feel like you've been talking about it for a couple of months now and how you were doing your mm-hmm. exercises wrong and all that stuff. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I'm I did proud, not proud know of you. That you could do them wrong. I thought as long as you were doing something, you were doing good, but I was making it harder on myself than it needed to be. Mm, Yep. That's typically how it goes. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm just like, as soon as I get onto like a Stairmaster type of thing or a treadmill, I'm just like, oh my God, I fucking hate exercising. I'm just going to diet. I'm just going to change up my diet a little bit just so I don't have to do this. I hate it that much. But it's like things like walking – I don't mind. I love walking. You know, I can do things like that, but it's just. Yeah. Walking I can do, but we have an elliptical, which you can see right behind me. (laughs) And dear Lord, that was sent by Satan. I'm positive that that is a torture device in some other like universe. I feel like someone needs to take a picture of Terry using this and post it on Twitter. Justin. (laughs) Yeah, no, he, he wants to survive the night. <laughs> um, oh, you asked me what's new with me. Nothing. <laughs> it's a new year. It's almost February, actually, in like a week, next week you're, or something. You're in new digs. I know, I'm in new digs. New digs, and it's cold. I don't like it. It's like freezing and drafty. So I'm just like, my hands feel like ice, but... Yeah, I guess that's new. I've been um, reading and uh, trying to get back into reading and I don't know. I've been working. I am. I have a problem. I'm like a workaholic. I always start a job and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to work my 40 hours, do my best and, you know, call it. I'm like working after hours and stuff. Like I legitimately have a problem. I'm like, oh, I'll just get ahead on this. And it's like, oh, I have an idea how to do this and this can be better and this will help all these people. And I'm just like, stop, Sandra. It's like, it's my way of distracting from like my other passion things that I'm insecure about. And I just need to like refocus. Maybe that, maybe that's what should have been my new year's resolution. (laughs) I didn't make any new New Year resolutions. Yeah, it. it's always I just always a disappointment in January, and it's just a downer. Yeah, but tell me, what have you been watching? So, I just watched after the newest one after we fell, right? Yeah. Hmm. Um, I know I told you all about this and I know we're going to have an episode on it later. So I'm not going to go too far into my feelings on that, but I did watch it. Yeah. I see the really forced smile. 
we watched it on the same same day, which is funny because we didn't even talk about like watching it together, but we were just texting and we're like, oh, I'm watching it. <laughs> but it yeah. was, eh. I don't know. I really adored the first movie, but I mean, this is a subject for another day. Hopefully we can get David on. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, I, I have some thoughts about how it, the movies feel and that kind of thing. But yeah. Yeah, it it doesn't have the same problem that we discovered in the second movie, though, I don't think, as much. It just Mm -mm. has its own unique take on everything. And I'm sure the last one, when it comes out, will have its own unique take again. They all just feel very disjointed in a way. Different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all you've been... What have you been watching? Oh my God, what have I not been watching is the real question here. So it's like winter, so I go in hibernation mode, but this goes back to the distraction thing with like workaholic stuff. And then now I'm just binging everything. So I've literally watched, so I finished all of Wheel of Time. I finished the last season of The Expanse. I watched Matrix 4 like two and a half times. I watched Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds. I, I adore that movie. Oh my God. It's so good. I feel like the underlying theme and the message of that is what Matrix was trying to do, but in a more confusing way because it didn't get good reviews, which I can understand. I really, really loved it, but I feel like Free Guy kind of did it better in like a fun way. I mean, Matrix 4 was still like Matrix style, but Free Guy was just so en- enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I loved it. So I, I I like that a lot. I binged the entire season of Invasion on Apple TV. And then that Jason Momoa so, show. Oh, yeah. So have you been watching Angel at all? In, in this <clears throat> we'll get to that. We'll, let me get through my binge fest here. <laughs> and I'll bring that back <laughs> around. Um, there's like two seasons of C on Apple TV with Jason Momoa and Mm -hmm. it's like a sci-fi-ish dystopian kind of movie. So it's like a virus renders everyone blind for like generations and generations. It's like 500 years later and literally everyone's blind. Mm -hmm. But now there's like people starting to be born that have vision again. And there's like some factions against it and all. It's like very, it's very fascinating to me. So I watched those seasons for all mankind Two seasons there, Raised by Wolves, watch that. I binged the Silent Sea on Netflix, like literally all I have been doing. Like how many shows did I just rattle off for you on the show notes? A lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> I Tara appreciate it. Me. You hate me. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I don't want to say it's like a depression or whatever distraction thing, but it's just like, that's what I do. So literally I've watched everything and I've just been eating candy and cake. Happy New Year. That New Year's resolution was definitely not weight loss for Sandra. No, this is why I don't make those. (laughs) But yeah, so you asked, I told. And, And now back to Angel? Back to Angel. They're is no going back to Angel. Like I'm going to watch like summaries and stuff like that and then look up posts for like top Angel episodes and like just go and watch those episodes and stuff, but like I tried. I I it's so long. So Ben will have to be, you know, really leading this Angel discussion when he's on. Well, you like it too. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I have to rewatch them too. Yes, I do. It's been a while for me. Ben is like so busy with all of this stuff. It'll give you ample time to catch up and probably me too to watch some more stuff by the time we record an episode on it. So yeah. So that's my thing with Angel. It's like, I just, I couldn't get into it. I really, 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 really tried, but it's like 20 something episodes. I don't mind like still going back, but. I think you have to, for me. I fell in love with Angel and Buffy, and so that helped because I was more invested in him as a character when I started Angel. So maybe you have to go back and watch all like probably. I'm sitting here Buffy to like 
<laughs> fall in love with Angel. Yeah. I, I was like sitting there watching it and then it's like Spike comes on some episode. I can't remember oh, which I love one. Spike. I'm like, what? And then like Buffy came back and like they were kind of together in this episode. And then she like, he made her forget. It was like a weird episode. And then she like didn't have any memory of being with him again. And I was just like, what is going on? I was like, I need to go back and watch the entire Buffy thing, which I'm sure is the same amount of seasons and episodes per season. I think Buffy's more seasons. It's like either oh seven or eight or nine or something like that. I don't remember, but there's a lot of them. Yeah. So that's going to be a stretch goal for 2022. Let's just let's just call it that. <laughs> Maybe by the end of 2022, we'll have an angel episode for you guys. Yeah. In the meantime, there are other throwback things we can do, like get more girls. We can do it. But anywho, let's go into sweet and sours. We've been like meandering. <laughs> so I will start because, well, I don't know. I just have mine prepared. So I had some alone time with Michael, my son. It was just me and him. And we were just having some mommy son time. And we got on Instagram and Instagram has a lot of little like filters slash whatever's that you can do like different games or different videos. And so we just sat there and did videos for like an hour. So sorry, Sandra, if I know I've seen these videos, a whole bunch of I think. notifications. Michael's like, let's do this one. Let's do this one. Let's do this one. I'm like, okay, we gotta, we gotta draw a line. Cause this is all going to my Instagram. Instagram <laughs> filters. Yeah, they are fun. They're addicting. I also discovered that I could probably pull off purple hair. So, you know. Yeah. You could rock it. It's useful too. Your hair looks like a dark plum right now. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So, just saying. (laughs) And then my sour um, is, like, I went to my neurologist recently, and I don't... I hate when doctors don't take you seriously. Like if you have a concern and they're just always like, eh, like, well, eh, isn't a good enough answer for me. Yeah. So that's my sours. I didn't feel like that was a positive experience. I feel like you hold medical staff up to a a high standard, which you should like given Mm -hmm. your personal experiences and stuff in the past with your family. So I totally get that. Well, and the eh that he said was like, I told him that my mom has MS because it's the first time I was seeing this one. And he was like, eh, not a big deal. He's like, you'd have probably got it and diagnosed by this point. And I'm like, she didn't get diagnosed until she was 62. So I feel like that's not a good enough answer for me. Like, just, just write it down. Okay. At least take a note. So if anything happens, we can have that in the back of our minds is a possibility yeah. maybe time for a new doctor maybe or to consider yeah, it like, or have you been with him for I a while I feel like that's a pretty pertinent like piece of information that a neurologist should know yeah but yeah, what about I'm you sorry <laughs> <laughs> um mine isn't that serious I mean I can start with sour first even though it's not that bad but it's like so Vincent's other teacher got COVID and then another student in his class. So literally, Tara, this is the third time that he has been directly impacted by COVID at school, which means another, you know, week and a half of quarantining at home. So that has been super fun trying to do meetings and get work done. It's just yeah, I'm ready to pull my hair out, but yeah. So that is a sour. Sweet. Fun. Uh, sweet is he also turned five and he wanted a Mario themed birthday cake. And so I decided to go big, even though we didn't have a birthday party or anything for him. So I did like a double tier cake and got these characters and he just I let him put all the characters on the cake and 
It was so good. It was like one layer was white cake with raspberry cream and the top layer was chocolate and had just buttercream all over it. Mm. And did you make these cakes? No, I did not make this cake, but I do want to try and make his next one. I was like, I could do this. Because I saw pictures of these cake or this cake and it was really adorable. And Sandra probably should post it on our Twitter to where everybody knows what cake we're talking about. But it was so cute. It was super adorable. And I was wondering, I was like, that's yeah. some talent right there. And I some looked different at it. flavors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like so mine good, are always, but... you get chocolate or you get vanilla. That's what you get. Well, it's like, I never do anything. Like last year I started going to a local cake shop. Uh, there's this um, half Japanese lady who, downtown Springdale who mm-hmm. has Shelby Lens, and she has like really cute custom cakes. So we did a space theme cake last year and she did a great job. And then this year they were renovating, so I couldn't order a cake through her. So I had to go through Rick's Bakery, which is a staple of Northwest Arkansas. And yeah, I was like, maybe next year I'm going to try making my own cake and and see what I can do. So next year will probably look like shit and not taste any good, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I will try. <laughs> so yeah, that was just going to be like that. Um, nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it. But yeah. So that was my sweet, my little baby boy turning five. He's getting so big and I've been eating lots of cake and putting on some pounds. So <laughs> no more of that. <laughs> So this episode is going to be not fun for me later on because we are going to have a lot of mentions for our show notes, but we are going to discuss our favorite books that we read in 2021. Woohoo! Do you want to start? It was a good reading year. I'm sure. It was. I was, was I was trying to think of what books I read and I was going through all of my like apps and everything. I'm like, what books did I actually read this year? Because 2020 and 2021 kind of meshed together for me. Yeah, it all, I, I don't know where the time has gone. It all feels the same, long, blah, but mm-hmm. I have 10, it is 10. And then I broke it out by genre, so I don't know how you I want to do I was not that organized. I, I'll i just pick one. So I'll go with an indie, indie genre first. And you can chime in with this one probably. So Kate Stewart's Ravenhood trilogy, Flock, Exodus, and the Finish Line. Oh my God. As far as romance goes, like – that was the series for me. I loved it so much. I went to her website and ordered like signed copies and got all this like little swag stuff from her. And yeah, I love that series. It was very, very good. Sandra made me read it and it is actually on my list too. So whoop, I don't even have to talk about it. But it made you cry too, didn't it? I bawled like a baby. I was so mad and one particular part so mad but I loved I'm not how you're texting away. you'll me. just have to read it yeah and then you can probably guess what part I was mad about yeah, yeah. but it's probably the same for both of us that's yeah mm-hmm. the second book in particular is what got me I was like crying and, and just sobbing at in my bed reading this and I remember when you were texting me because you were like trying to guess like what exactly kind of book it is because there's so – it's almost like a mystique about the series. She's mm-hmm. very vague and gives nothing away about what kind of like subgenre of romance this is. So you have no idea what you're going into. And I just love getting random text messages from you like, oh, it's this that's happening. It's this, isn't it? And I was just like, yeah, because I think at one point I thought it was like a werewolf movie or a <laughs> werewolf book. And like, are they werewolves? Because he said pup. Are they yeah. werewolves? Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Glad you loved that one too. Yeah. That one was really good. Definitely one you can reread too and catch some extra mm-hmm, mm-hmm. nuances that you didn't catch the first time because you had no clue what was going on. Yeah. Go ahead. What's what's one of your faves? So one of my faves is actually one that I reread the series in 2021. Mm-hmm. So I had started way back when, but 
it's by one of my favorite authors and so I can reread her books all the freaking time but it's the Fallen series by Abby Glines and so you are following Blair Wynn who her mom just died of cancer and she is having to pick up her life um, after that and then her sister had died in a car accident where her dad was driving and then her dad had left them and then her mom got sick with cancer and then died and then you pick up with Blair trying to move on with her life and her dad had remarried and her dad had remarried the son of a rock star and so she goes to the house trying to like find a place to live for a little bit and so it follows her falling in love with him and then more importantly him falling in love with her and it's just it's just a sweet little romantic story of, about young love but also overcoming some some issues I like the face you made when you said some issues you've mentioned yes. abby glein so many times i need to just mm-hmm. dive into her this year and see what see what all the fuss is about it's it's a very good series and very good author if you just want a love story where the female triumphs over something and you feel good about her getting yeah. her happy ever after. Yeah. I'll add some of hers. I'll probably ask you for mm-hmm. like top two of her recommendation. Well, so she has a lot of series. So like the Fallen series is the first of a series of like 10 books. Are these trilogy? So, uh, oh, 10 books. Like a 10 so book series. The, the Fallen series is, I think, actually four books. But okay. you live in a world of like five other ones too. So okay. they, they pick up with other couples that you met during that series. Okay. And then Yeah, I've seen a lot of authors do so that. I like those where you keep building on that world and you keep yeah. meeting new people and bringing them in. And then she has a series that follows that that is their kids who are uh-huh. all around the same age and like uh-huh. you just kind of follow them. So yeah. So okay. it's not a one and done book usually. I mean, I guess you could read them standalones. But it's better if you have the whole backstory too. Yeah. I'm like that with some fantasy stuff. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my second 2021 (laughs) favorite. Segue. Segue. Another um, indie read. And it was actually a Spiffbo 7, which is a self-published fantasy blog off, which is something I think Mark Lawrence and maybe a couple other people had started, but um, they were in their seventh year this year. And so this book is by indie author Chris Warman, and the book is Seasons of Albadon. So it's like a, it's probably like a couple hundred pages, so it's not very long at all. And I had no idea what to expect going into it, and I loved it. Like it was so well written and shocking. It was like Fern Gully meets the skeleton key and it was just like perfect it was so twisty and i enjoyed that one quite a bit awesome so hit me with your next one i'm gonna go with one that was very twisty for me too okay and i sensed a pattern as you were talking about your book with this book and my last recommendation or last great read because this book also starts with a girl whose mother just died of cancer and she went to live with her uncle and her uncle was a janitor at a school and so she starts going to the school and the school is for wealthy people and obviously she is not because she has no parents her uncle's the janitor She's not wealthy. So she gets kind of bullied a lot at the school. And then her uncle dies of cancer. So downer galore here. Um, But she, in him dying of cancer, finds out that her dad is alive and she finds out who her dad is. And he is really wealthy. 
And so she, the book follows her and his relationship. And there are a lot of twists and turns in that relationship. And then her relationship with a boyfriend who is wealthy as well. And this book is called, well, it's a series called The Untouchables by Ivy Smoke. So lots of twists in that one. Is that a pen and name, I don't, Ivy Smoke? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's a good one. Yeah. It's like um, on Green Lantern. What is her name? I didn't watch it. Oh, what is her name? <laughs> I don't remember her name, but it's something smoke. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, it's my next well, one. Well, in that same vein, <laughs> cancer. So my first pick for science fiction is the Impossible Times trilogy by Mark Lawrence, who I've I've started reading like a lot more of. And the first book is called A One Word Kill. And it has like major Stranger Things vibes. And so it takes place like in that time period. And these kids, teenagers are basically just like playing Dungeons and Dragons. And like it's a time travel science fiction. And the main character, uh, Nick, the protagonist, he has cancer. And so it's just a really emotional story. And it's kind of a love story with like huge themes of like friendship um, woven throughout it. And so like each book is maybe like 200 and something pages long. So it's not a long read at all. And it's on Kindle Unlimited. But the Impossible Times trilogy, love it. Feel good. So keeping on our theme of going with books that are like each other's. So my (laughs) next one is by Jude Devereaux. And it's called Chance of a Lifetime. And I don't know if you guys have caught it on here, but I love the love stories. I love love. Um, And this one is a love story that is set way back in the past. I don't remember the year, but way back in the past. And this girl is a little bit wealthier. um, And she ends up falling in love with this rogue thief. Um, And that's not who she was supposed to fall in love with, like faded love with. And so it throws the timeline off a little bit and he gets punished and he gets put forward in time to like present time. So there's some time travel and he has to help her fall in love with the guy that she was meant to be in love with in the past like her true soulmate and so he even though he's still in love with her has to help her or his soul gets like destroyed or whatever so well that went dark fast that's sad like why do you put yourself through this still you're like story, i can't though. help it you're like i love I'm gonna, love I'm gonna go. i don't care if it's sad it's still love. A love story <laughs> yeah um My second science fiction pick is book five in the Expanse book series by James S.A. Corey, Nemesis Games. Like that book made me cry. And like watching this book on the Prime adaptation, like they did the series so much justice. And like Dominic Tipper, who plays Naomi, this character in particular that I loved in book five, She just nailed it. And it was such an emotional scene. And I was just like tears, mascara, just streaming down my face (laughs) watching this episode and reading this book. So I I love Expanse, like book five. That is probably my number one, like my favorite in the series. So what's your next favorite book? So mine, I have a lot of series books. Um, So my next series is the Royal Hearts series by Ashley Jade. And I think I've mentioned her before, Mm -hmm. but this series includes Cruel Prince, Ruthless Knight, Wicked Princess, and Broken Kingdom. And I actually started with Broken Kingdom, which is obviously the last one. And it was so good. That one follows um, a guy and a girl. It's a love story, guys. Surprise. And he was a bit of a troublemaker 
he had a car accident. He was high and it killed a girl. And his girlfriend at the time was in the car with him. And it follows her whole like recovery and losing her memory. And so she doesn't know about him. He ends up going to jail and then they reconnect and following him finding like his worth again, because there was a reason he was high. There was a reason he was a worthless person to begin with, finding that worth and finding love through that worth or finding worth through that love. I got that backwards but yeah so it's really good and then I read the other ones and yeah they're all good you love sucker <laughs> I know I'm a sucker for love but I just like watching your face as you talk about it because you're just like beaming as you talk about these love stories so it's like as long as it makes you feel good and you you know have hope it makes it worth yeah, it and these are obviously younger, like, well, pretty much every one of my series are like 20 something. So this is their first experience with the real world. New too. adult. And yeah. So I love like reading about that time for them. I do too. That's why I love and... YA. Yeah. First love and first heartaches and challenges. Yep. I like that too. Um, th- okay. Okay. You can define favorite reads like so broadly. This book was not fun to read at all. So my last science fiction book is Infinite Jest, which you could argue is like American lit too, like just Mm -hmm. literary fiction, but it's like very science fiction-y. What? I don't know if you guys know this book. I know Sandra has never once mentioned this book on this podcast so it's never brand new brand new yeah this is like you've mentioning veronica mars <laughs> great <laughs> now i have to put that in show notes again <laughs> no infinite jest i finished reading it on november 20th which is significant in the story of it that date which was just like another little cherry on top when I finished the book finally, because it took me like three months of hardcore reading it. I felt like a Bible student, like having to like sit and do my (laughs) weekly reading and the pages are super thin. I mean, it was a monster of a book. So I probably hated reading it at least half of the time just because it's so dense. And David Foster Wallace, he's like a, I I forget what like specialty it is in linguistics and, and just words, But you will write down scores of words that you have never heard of before. It's like that type of book. So you're constantly looking things up and it's just twisty. But it's one of those books, like it was violent at times. Like it has some of the most violent scenes I have ever read in a book. But the end is in the beginning of the book. And so it's like looking back at all of these, like the tiniest little breadcrumbs throughout this huge monster of a book. It was just insane. So it just gave me such an appreciation And I just love, like, human beings can be so capable and so creative of, you know, creating something so original and just so intricate and detailed. And that always astounds me and, like, I find it inspiring. So even though I hated reading it half the time, like, it was a favorite read for, like, multiple reasons. So that's, yeah, (laughs) you go. (laughs) Okay, so... I will go with a book that I kind of hated reading too, but I loved in the, like, in the scheme of things, it was hard to read and it was called Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. And it's a true book. He is a lawyer that worked with um, people who were wrongfully convicted for whatever reason most of the time it was like a racial thing or they were poor or something like that and it kind of dived into his experiences and particularly one case but then you know multiple cases were touched on Um, and it was just very hard to read because these people's lives were being stolen for no reason other than like corruption or lack of the ability to fight it things like that 
Yeah. And so that one was hard for me, but it's also one that I think is very needed. People need to, to read and to know that these things are happening. So hard, but well worth it. Yeah. Before when we had discussed doing an episode on just mercy, I, so I didn't realize maybe I was just wasn't paying attention to that closely enough, but I didn't realize that there was also the book. So when I watched the movie, by the end of the movie, I was just sitting there and crying and I felt so empty yeah. and I was just like, I'm so mad at you. Like it is an important movie and it, it was so moving and like it makes you furious too. Like it, you feel enraged about just the treatment of people just and it for no good reason. Yeah. Your privilege. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like for me, it pulled out how much money does it take to actually get a fair shot in our justice system? Yeah. I probably would end up going to jail for a crime I didn't commit because I don't have the money to pay to not go to jail. Yeah. And then the book was worse um, than the movie because the book also detailed other situations that just were no better. Um, Like one of them, was a 13 year old girl who got sentenced for murder basically because her and her little sister didn't have anywhere to live. So they were squatting in a house and lit a candle candle for warmth and the candle caught the house on fire and it killed somebody. And so she was sentenced for that to jail as a 13 year old to the adult prisons where she was sexually abused by one of the guards. And it's just like, you're stealing her life, basically, because what is she supposed to do? Like, it's not like she set the house on fire on purpose. She was trying to survive. So there were a lot more like that that he put in the books. That it's just, it's miserable thinking about these little kids, thinking about these people going through this. Yeah. yeah that's my a- downer. That was just hard to read because it's true. Yeah. Well, I don't really know how to follow up that one. I'm like, uh, I guess nonfiction. <laughs> um, my favorite nonfiction that I read was a book by Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, who are the minimalists. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was Love People Use Things. And then kind of the tagline to that is because the opposite never works. And it was a book that's Primarily, it's based in psychology, like just different theories and ways of thinking and behavioral stuff in that. And so it broke down like values and um, just value-based living and all kinds of stuff like that. And it's just a real good reminder and eye-opener about just how you spend your time, you know, who you choose to have relationships with, because it is all about like personal choice. And I think we Mm -hmm. forget that, you know, that we have control over a lot of things in our life. There's some things we just don't have control over. But for a lot of things that give us heartache, yes, we do have control over changing those situations. And it was a good reminder of that. So it just breaks down lots of different buckets of everybody's life and puts a lot of things into perspective. So I I love all their books. Like usually they'll talk about minimalism in terms of like the materialism and consumerism aspect of it. But this was more of psychology to like help people like dig themselves out of like this hole that they feel like they're stuck in. So love that one. Okay. So my next one is another series and it involves, I don't know how to describe them, but it's called Gifted Academy by Michelle Hercules. And so basically this is an academy for gifted people like with magical powers or like some form of something right and so it's another one of those love stories but it's a reverse harem love story so this chick ends up with I think it's like five guys um who are all in love with her and again it's a YA um and she's a busy girl Yes, she is. But they all have their own like special thing. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and it takes some turns because like one of them ends up being, well, I'm not going to say what he ends up being, um, 
because that's a kind of spoiler but there's a lot of like just fun things I guess um with their giftedness um and yeah so it's, it's a good read it's fun there's also like a a sense of bullying because at first they all bullied her and then they fell in love so it's like a reverse harem and a enemies to like lovers kind of a I'm such a noob to the romance genre I know that they have subgenres just like you know fantasy and stuff does too Mm -hmm. so it's like the the bully romance the the reverse harem and stuff like that those Mm -hmm. are terms that I'm just like hearing very little of but yeah (laughs) that's mine what about your next one Sandra you're just sitting there staring Um, at me like I know the rest are gonna be fantasy books shocker to everyone right the first one was recommended to me a few years ago by a coworker, and then um, recommended to me again, you know, last year. The Name of the Wind, which is King Killer Chronicle, book one by Patrick Rothfuss. Beautiful writing, beautiful story. Um, the first book is like an academy set. And so it just goes through the main character's life. His name is Quoth, and he – they're like gypsies, his parents and, you know, the people that he lives with and just things happen to him along the way. But his goal has always been to go to the academy so that he can better his life. And so money is an underlying theme because he was always poor. And so there's like scenes that you'll read. And I was like getting very emotional and crying and feeling bad for this child. Um, but it's told from him relaying his story to a chronicler who is getting his story down. And it, it is supposed to take you know, three days to tell his story. So book one is day one and just the writing is so beautiful and lush and it's very, I don't know, it's so sad. It's like a kind of melancholic at times, but I really enjoyed it. It was one of those fantasy stories that had all kinds of things. So it has like the bully at school. It has magic. It has um, a library. I, I tend to like gravitate to these books that have a school setting and there's always like this epic library where there's like mysterious stuff happening but like beauty um, and the beast like i don't know that i would really complain too much yeah i wouldn't complain either i'm just i guess kidnap me and keep me <laughs> is that what we're supposed to say okay. oh yeah it's not stockholm syndrome it's no i like books something else yeah i like books but you go. What's yours next one? So my next one is Cassandra Clare. Like, I love C- Cassandra Clare. She is the author of the Shadowhunter series. Um, I loved her series that was chronologically before that. But that's not the series we're talking about. So the series that I read this year is um, The Last Hours. And there are two books out in it. One is called Chain of Gold, and then the other is Chain of Iron. And so those follow Cordelia Carstars, or Carstairs, however you say it, and then her friends, um, James Herondale and Lucy Herondale and the Lightwoods and the Fairchilds. And if you've watched Shadowhunters or read any of her books, you've heard all of those last names um, because James is the son James and Lucy are the son of um Tessa who is a part of the series that I love the most um but yeah you just follow her her dad was accused of something um and she gets thrown into the world and fends for herself I feel like shadow hunters is one I've heard all the time and I just still have not read so so I forgot what the series, I think it's the Infernal Devices that I liked. Hold on, let me, let me look. Yeah, it's the Infernal Devices that I loved, um, which are the Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. So definitely recommend that one. And you don't have to have read the other books to get that one, because that one's chronologically first. Good to know. Thank you. Start start with that one. 
It's a new year. The possibilities are endless. And you will see how Will fell in love. Okay. Anyway, my second favorite fantasy book was Jake Ristoff's Empire of the Vampire, which I've mentioned before on a previous episode. I mean, it it reminds me structurally like The Name of the Wind, where the main character is telling his story to somebody else and the things that have happened to him that are absolutely heartbreaking, just very tragic. But Jay Kristoff's writing is also quite funny, and I think he counted how many times he used the word fuck, and it was like 437 times in this book. <laughs> so it's like that kind of humor. He's Australian, so, I mean. He can use that know. word. Yeah, cunts are mates and mates are cunts, right? <laughs> I think that's that's how it goes in Australia. But I, I recommend that one. It's hilarious. I will be like laughing out loud. But then there are also parts that are like, no, Jay Kristoff, you did not just do that. I'm going to throw my book out the window moments too. So. so now I'm thinking I should read this book because I like to laugh and I like to feel like I need to throw my book out the window. So yes, it's fantasy first, but there is some smut in it too. It's not like romance smut, but there is smut in it. You would enjoy it. You would find it funny. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see what your reactions to some things are. So you should read that one. Speaking of smut, this is my first smut book on this list. <laughs> but my next book is called Well Played, and it's by Vi Keeland. And I know I've told you about Vi Keeland before and I told you that she writes a little riskier books um so yeah but this book follows a guy who is some sort of professional football or professional like sports person I think it's hockey but maybe it's baseball don't quote me um and he inherits a house slash inn along with a girl and the girl is the mother of his brother's child and she had just broken up with his brother because she caught him cheating for like the fourth time right and so she's like you know what I need to change I just got this house that my son inherited so I'm just gonna go and make it you know live there make it a beautiful place use it for income things like that She didn't count on her baby daddy's brother being there Um, and chaos ensues because he's mad at her for breaking up with his brother and she's, you know, got a reason to have broken up with his brother. And so um, they, I don't remember the word, I'm getting like, they, they have a lot of conflict. They push each other's buttons and then he discovers the reason that she broke up with his brother and he sees her in a new light and then they end up falling in love. So there's love. Sounds very cat and mouse-ish. You've mentioned this book before. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you must really, really, really love it. (laughs) I like it. It was just a very like fun, quick read. You don't yeah. have to think a whole lot. You don't have to try and figure out what's going on. You know exactly what's going on the entire time in this book. So it's on Kindle Unlimited. I think so. Yeah. When we do the show notes, we can we can link where these things are available. If it's Kindle Unlimited, like just the Amazon link or whatever, we can do that. Um, my oh, we can. next. No. <laughs> yeah. T- <clears throat> let me let me correct myself here. <laughs> Tara can (laughs) third fantasy book before they are hanged which is book two in that sounds like a a great title like very positive book here yeah it's the first law trilogy by Joe Abercrombie and book one is the blade itself um before they are hanged is book two and then the last one is the last argument of king's I thought the second book was like so hilarious. It's like you follow the perspectives of different characters and there's like a strong female character who's been through the ringer and she's quite violent. Um, But there's like an awkward sex scene and it's just like, it's grimdark is the subgenre of it. And with grimdark, it's kind of like, you know, 
Game of Thrones, it's like you you anticipate all of this character growth for people, but at the end of the day, people be people, and sometimes they just revert back. <laughs> yeah, it's like that type of they thing. They don't grow. They don't grow. In fact, like the complete opposite happens. It's just a shit show. But I mean, there was amazing action. The dialogue is just sharp and hilarious, and I it's so funny. Uh, I really loved Before They Are Hanged. So recommend that trilogy. So if if you were watching this on YouTube and you just saw my weird face, and it was not because of what Sandra was saying, but my dog is over here licking the wall for some reason. <laughs> so, so that was why I was making weird faces. Tara's so, making yeah. slurping noises. <laughs> not me. My dog is apparently... I don't know. There's no there's no lead in my paint though, so don't come at me. She's fine. Um, oh, that's good. Good good for baby owner. <laughs> oh yeah, she's she's being very weird right now, and I don't understand why. But hey, probably because she got in trouble for eating Justin's dinner. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. She's like, I better stay in here and just be weird. I don't know what she's doing, but anyway. So just wanted to let you guys know it was not about Sandra's book. It was my dog being weird. Um, so my I think final book, I have some others, but I'm gonna I'm gonna end on this one, is by Rochelle Mead. And it is the Glittering Court book series. And I like the so title. It starts out with Glittering Court. And then um, basically you are following a girl who they have kind of like this academy-ish thing where they send girls who are not wealthy to like learn etiquette and things like that and enter the upper. Is this like the princess diaries? Upper class. Like they can marry wealthy basically. And so it follows a, a girl, um, Adelaide, which I love that name. I love it. Anyway, um, and you see her going through this court and then there are others um, that go in after her and she makes friends and they just, lots of, lots of fun things happen. So yeah. Cute. I don't know if you heard me. I made the comment of like princess diaries when you were talking about them going off to school to learn etiquette and stuff. It's like you reminded me of, Anne Hathaway getting all groomed and them trying to teach her all the or pretty woman yeah. too, I guess. Yeah. Basically, they they pretty woman princess her up. Mm, I like it. <laughs> and and it's like all of them too. Like it's not just her, it's all of the girls. So there's multiple different girls who are going through this and trying to marry wealthy and which is just somewhat annoying to me. But also, like, I get it. I don't know. I like the, like, juxtaposition of wealth and how important it is in the world and, and things like that. And, and how many people don't people have it. They don't have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how, like, that sometimes is misconstrued as your worth as well. Like, yeah. Like these, these women in this series show their worth outside of the wealth. Um, But that's what kind of brought them together is the fact that they didn't have any and they needed to figure out a way to like make themselves worthy. And they were worthy already, but. Mm, So true. I only have one more book too. So it's like the last fantasy book. It was probably the last trilogy like series that I read in 2021, but it's The Poppy War by Rebecca or Mm R.F. Kuang. Um, Book one was probably my favorite just because it starts out like young girl is like hell bent on getting out of her shitty situation, studies her ass off, gets a spot, like a scholarship essentially to go to a military school. And then war breaks out, you know, across the the series and then it follows her arc it's also grim dark <laughs> is like to give you like a kind of a bird's eye view what all direction that goes 
but it's also I I feel like it gets mistaken as YA fantasy a lot just because this happens a lot with women authors it's like everyone assumes they're just younger geared and it's adult fantasy through and through. And there's just like some really um, serious things that happen in it. There's like a lot of violence, there's rape. It just shows you the brutality of war. And that's just kind of the theme of the whole series is just the cost of it. Like what is the cost really? It's not just everything happening now, but it's generations and molding generations of, of thinking about it afterwards. So heartbreaking end, the last book. Last book was like my second favorite. The middle book was like, eh, for me, but I really loved the first book. So that is the last, go ahead. (laughs) So I am very surprised because you made me read a book this year and you did not list it in your favorites. And now I'm kind of, wondering why you made me read the book if it's not one of your favorite books <laughs> i so i kind of thought you were gonna say it just because you said you like the second half i will say the first book is probably my least favorite i okay. love the second and third books like the second and third books it's like buckle your seatbelt like holy shit i love where this is going i love the power dynamic too like it just gets bigger and yeah and so the book we're talking about is from blood and ash Mm -hmm. right yes yep yes um sorry i get those like i feel like it should be like two i don't know anyway so from blood and ash and i agree with sandra i did not put it on my list because the first half of that book it was it was one of those I'm like, if I wasn't reading this because somebody recommended it, I would have probably put it down 10% in or 20% in because it was hard. It was yeah, hard. There was a tr- lot mm-hmm. of like preparing you for what was going to happen. Exactly. But then about 50% in, shit starts happening. And you're like, oh, okay, okay, mm-hmm. I'm good. And then the last half of the book you've read before you even like realize it's, it's over. So I did like that, but it's not on my list because that first half, dear Lord. It's a lot of setting the stage and world building. And honestly, Mm -hmm. okay. If you're not familiar with what the series is, I had no idea what it was about going into it, but it's about vampires. It's a, it's a adult romance fantasy like vampire story and so there's a lot of world building it's very it gets very technical like the different Mm -hmm. like factions of vampire like what they are and the different levels so there's a lot of that 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 they're vampires until like 50 percent into the book so there's a lot of Mm -hmm. like setup to get to the point yeah which yeah i mean some of it was needed but i feel like it could have been like a smidge shorter in that part. Yeah. And all of her books are about 600 pages. Like that's her sweet spot. So there's always going to be like a little bit of that, but not as much because she's setting the stage so much in that first book. But like the second and third Mm -hmm. books, you're just like, holy cow. And then the fourth book comes out in March, I believe. And it's called The War of Two Queens, which I'm Mm -hmm. like goosebumps. I'm like ready for it. (laughs) Okay. So so what you're saying is I need to read the second and the third book. Mm-hmm. But the smut is so good. <laughs> like, just read the rest of the books. Just he, this is like the first romance series that I have read where the male romantic interest is very. He asks for consent. Like, he always makes sure it's okay. Type of thing. Like, well, that makes what? sense because he has a special power that, like, could make that he has many special powers. <laughs> um. You know, like yes, yes, yeah. So but, it makes sense that he would always make sure mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. It was just one of those books. I was like, man, consent is very, very sexy, and like you would think that more people would experiment with that because it's always like the enemy, like big brute getting the woman type of thing. Anyway, in the stuff that I've read, or I feel like, but. I feel like that's our hashtag for this episode. 
No. Hashtag consent is sexy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a you, good one. You made the other one. You made the consent other one happen. Sexy. Yeah, consent is sexy. Yeah. yeah, that should be a thing. Consent is sexy. Like, we, that should be a thing. Yep, that's our hashtag Permission. for this episode, guys. Permission, always. But anywho, well, that was fun. I loved going through these yeah. books. I like how Sanders are all like fantasy, which mine, mine, some are mine. Oh, wow. I can't talk. Um, mine are too some, but mine are all love stories in some sense. And Sanders are all like, you know, let's kill world, things. Completely. Let's burn the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> start a let's just war. Start over. Let's just start over. I'm, maybe, maybe that's I'm what the I'm love saying. side and you are the war side. I know. Just, at some point, at some point, I'll I'll come back down to to earth and level out a little bit. But until then, I mean, but that just... makes sense. Like Sandra's been in a that that place where it's all sours, so it makes sense that she wants to read about other people who have it worse, other worlds that are like worse than ours. Yeah, misery loves company. And- and I'm over here trying to look at the bright side, like, oh, all these people are falling in love. I don't want your sunshine. Stop <laughs> smiling and being happy. No. Oh, I feel like Sandra's a little rain cloud over here. <laughs> me I rainbow. love my rainy days. Like, that reminds me of Ravenhood. I don't want to give mm-hmm. away splat. The, splat the rainy days were. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I'm, the, I'm a rainy day girl. That's also why. Why I thought this one was like a like a vampire werewolf kind of thing because there was a thing with the rainy days. I'm like, oh, they're vampires. You're like, oh, I'm getting Twilight vibes. <laughs> yes, it's a love triangle with a werewolf and a vampire. Mm. It's not. Guys. Have you listened? It's have you listened to? It's not Twilight. Yeah. Have you listened to Kate Stewart's um, playlist on Spotify that she created for this mm-hmm. series? Oh my God, Tara. Okay, there are some Twilight soundtrack songs on it. So that's like the funny thing. Because there are parts, especially in the second book, I think it was, where I was like sitting there reading it and being emotional and crying. Um, but just go listen to that. I'll, I can send I you what that link is too. Because that'll be in the show notes that you put together. Woo! <laughs> 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 anyway... Now this February, we have finally put out our favorite reads of 2021. So these aren't books that necessarily came out in 2021, but they're just books that we read that we really, really loved for different reasons. So we hope you picked up some new ideas for what to read based on that. Yeah. Maybe those can be your favorites from 2022. Another year. My God, where does the time go? It's crazy. I know. Still in a pandemic. Still here hanging on. Yep, just barely. (laughs) Well, if you have any great ideas of what we should talk about, please hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, email at storydarlings, and then email is at Gmail. Thank you for remembering. I did good. You're so good. I can pat your head. (laughs) (laughs) But thanks for listening. Until next week. Bye. Have a great. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) I love you.